Welcome to the first day of school. Online school, that is. Hey, it's Mr. Brooks here, and I'll be teaching your online math or pre-algebra class. And I'm going to try to mimic um, an in-person class as much as possible. And I recommend that you try to mimic a school day um, as if you were going to school as much as possible as well. And a couple of things that will help you to be most successful is to have a time that you get up every morning. And I know that probably seems um, reasonable. You probably thought, oh yeah, of course I'm going to get up in the morning. How else am I going to do that? But have a certain time that you get up, like 7 o'clock. The alarm goes off and you get up. And then have a routine. The routine should be you get up. You get ready and you get dressed. And you might think, I'm at home. Can't I just wear my pajamas all day? No, okay? You're not going to be successful unless you um, treat this seriously. So um, you get up at a scheduled time. You get dressed. You get ready. Um, you have breakfast. And then you go to a place that you have set aside to do your schooling, okay? And um, I highly, highly recommend that you start your school day with math. Okay, studies have shown that Mr. Brooks wants you to start with math. I'm just saying, they're out there. So start with math class. It should be the first class that you do in the morning. And my lessons will be posted at 8 o'clock. I can schedule them to be posted. So bing, right at 8 o'clock, lessons come up. And um, you've already got your work area ready, which means you have your math book there. You're going to want your math book there. You pick that up in school before school started when you showed up to get your materials. So you have your math book and then you also have um, some packets that I put out and those packets look exactly like this. There's chapter three, the packet. There's a chapter two. There's a chapter one. And those are all stapled together. Those are for um, there, I call them journal pages because usually we have a journal that goes along with that, and that's coming, but I got these ready for you because they were a little delayed. And um, we'll be looking at, obviously, chapter one first. Actually, the three chapters should get you, if you're in Math 7, all the way through the first marking period, and if you're in pre-algebra, almost all the way through the first marking period. And then there was a fourth packet, and that is something that looks like this, minute one, and it's got minute one through minute nine. And I'll tell you what that is in uh, just a little bit. So you've got your materials, you've got your math book, you've got some lined paper to do work on. Um, you need to have lined paper. Lined paper helps you to stay neat and organized and logical because math is neat and organized and logical. So we use lined paper and, and we use the lines on the paper. Once in a while I'll have a student that uh, writes on this as if they don't see these. They write all over the place. Or sometimes they'll start a problem here, and the next step is up here, and then over here, and then they scooch down over here, and then sideways. And Don't do that. Nice, neat, organized. I'll be modeling how to do that. I know most of you already know how to do that, but if you don't, um, you'll be watching how I do it. We'll do it like that on here. You'll be most successful. And then you should have a few of these bad boys, pencils, uh, nearby, sharpened, of course, um, with an eraser, a good eraser, and ready to go, okay? So then you're all ready, you've got it cleared of distractions, okay? So don't have your phone nearby, don't have a gaming controller nearby, don't have another window opened up on your computer where you're doing something else, Slither.io or something like that. Um, you're, you're doing math, you're, you're getting it done first thing in the morning and um, you're most productive with your first uh, class. So. We're going to do that. You've got everything ready. And then you go into your Google Classroom. On the bottom of that page, you're going to see three choices. The first one being Stream. That's the page that it opens up to. I don't put much on this page. In fact, I'll probably only have one instructional video on there. It gets too cluttered and people get lost on it. The second one, this one here, Classwork. That's the one you're going to need to go to. I'm going to post everything in there you need. The last one, people, is one that you won't use for this class either. So let's go to classwork. Once you select classwork, you'll be brought to the page that looks similar to this. I've tried to break this down very logically so it's easier for you to see where you are and what you're supposed to be doing. The very bottom section will be week one, 
Tuesday, 9-8. So 9-8, that's the date for today. And tomorrow's week one, Wednesday, 9-9 is up above. And as I add um, days, they'll continue to add onto the top. So you can always go all the way to the bottom and see the, the very first lesson. And the, the one on the very top will be the very last lesson, um, the one for the day. So always go to the, the top one that is for the day. You won't see tomorrow's on there until tomorrow when things actually get posted on there. But if you're looking under week one, Tuesday, 9-8, that's today, there's one that says videos. And that videos is under material. When you see the videos there, click on that. That's the first thing you should do. That's why I put that on top there. And you watch the videos. This, you start with lesson. Okay, so you'll go to the lesson video and you'll watch it. And if there are any other videos there, they'll be helpful to you, but they're not uh, mandatory that you watch, but they would be very helpful for you. Underneath lesson is a bell ringer quiz, and I'll talk to you what a bell ringer is in a moment, but um, you'll take that quiz. It's got that little clipboard icon next to it. And then the last one is the chapter one fair game review, also a quiz. So those are the two assignments that you have to do for the day. Okay, so first you watch the video for lesson, and then you will go and do those assignments before the end of the day. Well, let's talk about what a bell ringer is. Okay, if you're going to have to take a bell ringer quiz, you should probably know what a bell ringer is. Well, a bell ringer is the first thing you're going to work on in the class. And we'll do a little mock class uh, in a few minutes here. But when the bell ringer pops up, that's this um, packet that you took home, starting with minute one. Okay, so these are some random problems. Um, some of them are review of things you've learned in the past. Some are really close to what we're learning in class. Some are a preview of things to come. And don't worry about these. I'll talk about them in just a second. But for the bell ringer, there are going to be some problems that um, will pop up on the screen. And then you'll work out those problems. Um, usually, there'll be three of them. Okay, so you'll um, write down the problem that I post on the screen um, and work them out. Immediately after you're done, um, then you'll watch, continue watching the lesson and I'll work out those problems. When you work them out, you should do it nicely, neatly, and organized like I did. This is today's bell ringer, and you'll see the, in the video later. But you can see I did it nicely, neatly, organized, put the answers on here, um, circled them so I knew where the answers were. And then I took that, headed it bell ringer with today's date, and I put it somewhere where I would know where it is, right here on my table, really close by, because I'll need those when I take the quiz. And then, um, so this will be done every day. And you have to do it every day because it's what is counted for attendance. In fact, it's due by 2.30 that same day. You have to take the bell ringer quiz by 2.30 um, every day. And that counts as your attendance in this class. If it's late, then you get marked absent. So make sure you get that done. But since Matt's your first class of the day and I give you the answers then you could even pause the video at that point and go take the quiz and get 100% and be done with it. Or, right at the end of the lesson, um, go and do that bell ringer quiz. So you've got it done, and you don't have to worry about that. Um, or else 2.30 is going to come and go, and it'll be like 4.15, and you'll be like, ah, I forgot to do the bell ringer quiz. Even though I was doing math today, I get marked absent. So make sure you get that done promptly. It'll be part of your routine, and you won't miss that. Okay? So it is worth three points, so it is part of your grade. But again, I give you the answers there. So you should always get them all right, because I give you the answers, okay? Friday's bell ringer looks a little different. That's what the front of this is for. So sometime between the beginning of the week and the end of the week, you'll find time to do this, or you can just save it all until Friday. And you'll get this all done. And then I also go over the answers to these, explaining them as I go. It goes rather quickly. And so Friday's bell ringer quiz, it has 10 problems here, but it's still only three. So I'll randomly choose um, these. When you go to take the quiz, I don't type out the whole question. It'll just say bell ringer quiz number one. And then so for number one, you put the answer for number one. And then it might have two. And hashtag two, meaning put the answer for number two. But when you get to Fridays, it might say number one, 
hashtag four, which means go put the answer for number four there. And it's multiple choice, so you just select it. Then for number two, it might say hashtag six, and you put the answer for number six. And then number three might be hashtag nine, okay, number nine. So you'll do that. Okay, so it won't always be those three. I'll go around in there, so be very careful. Number one is not always going to be number one. So look what it says. If it says hashtag three, we're talking about number three. If it says hashtag five, number five. Okay, so pay attention, but I've given you all the answers, so it should go rather quickly for you. Those bell ringer quizzes, when you get to them, should take you less than a minute. You're merely filling in the answers, okay, and getting 100%, by the way. Okay, so um, once you're done with that bell ringer quiz, then it, the lesson starts, and you'll take notes on the lesson, and um, I'll s assign some of the problems out of the book. The answers to the odd problems are in the back of the book, and I do expect you to work them out and then check your answer, okay? So make sure you're doing that. Um, the assignment at the end, uh, assignment or homework, that's going to be a journal page. And I've given you the journal pages. The journal pages for chapter one are in that packet. You don't do all the packet. You just go to whatever journal pages I say. And for tonight, it's these first two. It's the fair game review. Fair game review is something you should already be able to do. So journal pages one and two. It would normally be back to back, but I photocopied them. Not back to back. So you'll have two pages and you'll work these out. And then... Um, or you can watch the video where I work them out and talk through them, and you can do them with me. Usually kids will do them ahead of time and then watch the video to make sure they got them correctly. They don't take a long time. And then you'll go take the quiz for that. And that quiz is just a way to like make sure you did the homework and that you um, I don't know, got them right. Okay, So make sure you go through that, check your answers with the video, and then go and take that quiz. So that's not really a quiz. These are both, um, they're called quizzes on Google Classroom. But they're not quizzes, they're just assignments, okay? So the bell ringer is really to take your attendance and make sure you paid attention and got the answers right. And the fair game review quiz or the journal page quiz, they're not really quizzes, they're just assignments. And you doing the multiple choices just to let me know that you um, did the assignment and, and watch the video to make sure you got them correct, okay? So that's the bell ringer, then the lesson, and then the assignment. And actually, before the bell ringer even pops up on the video, I do usually um, start with a thought of the day. Usually, it's just up there for a couple of seconds. Sometimes, it'll be a thought that I just put up there, uh, my own thought, a thought I stole from somebody else on Google, or somebody said it in class, and I thought it was really inspiring. Um, sometimes, I'll talk about it for a minute or two. Sometimes, I won't. So, kind of a hit or miss thing, but they're all thoughts, all right? So that's how it starts. Then it goes to bell ringer, then the lesson, then yeah, I assign the assignment, and then um, that's it. So there are a couple other things. One is, I, uh, if you have not yet done so, I highly recommend that you go to um, GMS Math. It's a YouTube channel, my channel, and that you, you could subscribe. Then when I post a video, it actually shows up on there. So even though my lessons aren't... Um, they don't pop up on Google Classroom until 8 o'clock that morning. If you were ahead of the game, you could always go to the Google, I mean the YouTube channel, watch the video, and get a lot of the stuff done. Then when you get to the Google Classroom, um, you've just got most of it done. You just go in and take do the assignment quizzes so that I know you got them done. So it is possible to work ahead and know what's coming up. Um, or you don't have to, but it, it is possible. And... There's a lot of stuff on there that you might want to see. Um, I have turned off all the comments on the videos, or at least I am as we go along turning off the comments. Not because I don't want to hear from you, but I've got people from other years that jump on there and they've got things to say and it gets a little distracting. I love hearing from them, but it gets a little distracting for the Google Classroom. So I did turn the comments off and I will as we go along, um, except for if I have like a just for fun video. Sometimes I have a, um, a video um, that'll be like just for fun. It'll be just for fun. So then you can put a comment on there. Um, somebody asked about Zoom time already. I already had somebody email me. Zoom times for math um, are Monday and Wednesday. Math 7, that's 7th grade math, will be 1.45 until 2.05. Okay, on Monday and Wednesday. I'll remind you on Mondays and Wednesdays lessons 
here because you're doing our lessons early in the morning, like right at 8 o'clock. But then I'll see you again during the Zoom 145 to 205. It's 20 minutes. And then pre-algebra, your time will be Monday and Wednesday still, but 2.10 to 2.30. Okay, and I'll remind you on those days. And I'm using the Zoom lessons for answering any questions you have about what we're doing. So sometimes we'll have a little discussion. Any questions you have that you need answered, first of all, you could always email me. But if you didn't and you want to wait till Zoom, you can ask and then I can like work it out on the board uh, behind me because I'll be in my classroom. Or um, I'll just start working out problems, okay? Problems that go along with what we've been doing. So unless there's a question, because I'll be watching for questions, but... In the meantime, instead of you just like looking at my face on Zoom, I'll be working out some problems so we can do that too. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like. Now what we're going to do is go through today's lesson. Now, there's not really a meaty math part of the lesson because that's what everything we've been doing right now, just getting you used to the classroom. But there we are going to start with a thought of the day, go into the bell ringer, which there is one, and you will have to take the quiz for um, attendance purposes. And then um, there is an assignment. So, so we're going to go into that um, shortened lesson right now. The only way to learn mathematics is to do mathematics. Hmm. This is where you pause the video, work out the problems and then resume the video. Now that you've had a chance to work these out, let's go through them together. So we have um, three plus in parentheses, B plus eight parentheses. So because these are all addition, we can use something called the commutative property of addition, where we're gonna keep this the same, but we're gonna switch these two around to make it instead of B plus eight, eight plus B, which probably doesn't seem like that big of a deal yet, but now that we're going to, um, now that we've done that, we can change where these grouping symbols are using the associative property of addition to have three plus eight in parentheses and then plus B. So we're going to add these two together to get 11 and then plus B. We can't simplify this um, expression anymore because these are unlike terms. This is a B term because it has the variable B. This is a constant because it has no variable. It's just a number. 11 plus B is a correct answer. But the more correct answer, or at least the way we should write it, is B plus 11. Just switching those two around, we can do that because it's addition again. And the reason is we, use, we usually put our variable terms first and end our expressions with a constant, if there is a constant to end with. So B plus 11 is the answer for number one. I'm gonna circle it, and you should circle it on yours, because when you go to take this quiz, you're just going to look for number one's answer, B plus 11. Down here, we're going to do something similar. Um, we don't have to switch these around with the commutative property of addition. We're just going to regroup over here, the grouping symbols with the associative property of addition. So now it's D plus four plus six. We'll add these two to get D plus 10. And now my variable term already comes first, ending with our constant. We cannot combine these because this is a variable term, a D term, and this is still a constant because it has no variable. So D plus 10 is the answer to that one. And then finally, we have number three here. And for number three, there's no addition at all. It's actually multiplication. We would multiply these two first because they're in parentheses. Five times P is just five P. There's nothing else we can do to those. Um, or, and then we could regroup it over here though, because this is six times five P. And we have, that'd be the same as six times five. I'll put a, a dot there for a multiplication. I can't just put them next to each other because it would just look like 65. It's okay to put these next to each other because one's a constant, one's or one's a number, and one's a variable. We call this a coefficient here, but um, we know that it's not 50p, okay? It's five times p. Well, here we have to put a dot in there. So now we have six times five first, and the p on the outside. Six times five is 30, and the 
variable gets tacked on here. So 30p, which means 30 times p. We don't have to put a dot in there. If you did put a dot in there, it wouldn't be wrong, but we usually try to uh, make it as simple as possible. So we'll leave the dot out just 30p. And when you go to take the quiz for bell ringers, what's going to happen is you will just see it says a bell ringer quiz and it'll have the date 9 8. And then you'll go in and it'll, it won't have this problem here. What it will do is just say number one. And then by number one, it'll say number one because you're going to write the answer for number one. Not write the answer, choose the answer because it's multiple choice. You'll choose B plus 11. For number two, you'll choose D plus 10. And there are three other answers there. Don't be fooled and pick those. And then finally, for number three, you'll pick 30P. All right, so go ahead and you'll be taking that bell ringer quiz. Remember, you do have to do it today before 2.30 because it counts as your attendance for the class. All right, so you've got your bell ringer done with the answers circled. So you can go take that quiz get 100% so I can take your attendance and you get those three points. And then you're going to head over and you're going to do the fair game review for chapter one, which is journal page one and two out of this packet right here. Watch the video, get them all right, and do that assignment as well. I hope you have a great first day of school and the rest of your classes, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. See ya!